In this video, we're going to be discussing the manual J, which is used for calculating residential loads for homes. And this book is put out by American or Air Conditioning Contractors of America, or we call it ACA. Uh, this is the eighth edition, and this is the abridged, which is uh, slightly less information than the unabridged uh, book. And as we go through, we will be talking about the, the content inside of this. And this book is put together uh, a little bit different. Um, it has different sections on it. Um, part one, which is the core training, it has sections. Basically, it's, it's explaining um, the different portions of the book. And such as in t uh, section one, it talks about the types of heating and cooling loads that you have find um, in homes. And it breaks it down from, and it gives you an explanation of the different components of a house. Uh, then it goes into section two, which is uh, making an accurate load estimate. So it basically gives you the knowledge and information of how to fill out and how to use this uh, book. Section three goes into uh, the importance issues and concepts that we need to understand. Type four covers components uh, in heating loads. Section five goes into components in cooling loads. And section six is explaining how to use this book and how to fill out the worksheets. Uh, so we spend most of the time in section six. And section six is used to, like I say, uh, filling out all the different worksheets uh, to be able to determine the heat load for a house. So it will get into learning what it would take to determine the uh, heat loss of a house uh, in the wintertime and also the heat gain in the summertime. So this is will step by step walk you through uh, the book. So as we took at this and we go to um, section seven, it's basically doing a block load, and block loads is determining just the amount of heat loss for a house. But actuality, the whole process is really uh, after we determine the, uh, the total load for a home, which is the block load, we break it down to the individual rooms. And the individual rooms is how we determine uh, airflow and volume of air for each room. Of course, this course, we're not going to get into uh, airflow. It's not necessary at this point, but we have to determine what the heat load for the room is, both for heating and cooling. Uh, section 8 goes into uh, a, a residence that it's a, a sample house, and it's just one page, and you just go into the, the block load to give you an uh, uh, example of how to fill out the sheets. So we look at this. Uh, this is a residence, too, for 6 and 8. There's two different... Uh, load calculations to give you ideas how to determine heat loads. Section 9 goes into uh, another structure. So section 7, 8, 9 is three different uh, examples of heat loads for a home. Then we get to uh, section 10. It basically says what to do next, uh, how to check your work, trust your work, Basically, just give you little things to uh, look at and what the next step after that, after you determine your heat load, like determining the, uh, uh, the sizing up the equipment that you're going to install in the house, how to size up the ductwork for the house too. But um, section six is what we're really going to concentrate and spend most of the time in. And where you're going to get your information from is from section one through five, which will... Uh, basically work you through the information to help you fill out the, the charts. So as we look through, I'm, we're going to turn to section one in the book, which starts on page one, and we will uh, go through the introduction and section one. And it, it basically gives you the knowledge of the envelope loads, it give you information about the design loads. It will give you uh, block loads again, and understanding these different um, things you need to know for the um, 
for the house. Then we go into uh, charts and things to give you diagrams of a house to understand the components of a structure uh, that will give you understanding, understanding what is the envelope, what is uh, condition space, and what's non-condition space. Okay, so as we look through, we're going to be reading through this, uh, this material so we can start uh, determining from a blueprint, uh, determining the heat loads for a house. Section 3 goes into important issues and concepts. Now we're really getting into things that we need to look for as we're going through a blueprint to, to determine uh, how to measure uh, some of the terminology that we're going to be using to uh, help determine the loads of the house. And for example, when we look at a structure, we look at the design temperature difference. Um, some things like rounding off the numbers. Basically there's a uh, factor built into as we go through so it's, we don't have to get down to like a tenth or a hundredth of a degree or a point but we can round it off to the next highest number and it goes into how to do that in, the, uh, in this chart. Now as we go through we look at designs, we look at comfort levels for um, homes and people in the house and how we look at conditions inside the house which is based on temperature and also the um, humidity that's in the house. So we go through these different chapters. We're going to jump to section six to give you an idea of how that's put together. I highlighted some things in, the, uh, in this book so you'll be able to uh, see some of the key points that is very important as we uh, discuss uh, using the charts. And the charts, like I say, where, where you put all your numbers down and keep uh, everything in an orderly fashion. And as we go through, working through the different components in a in the house. Now, we start out with worksheet A. It's a worksheet all by itself and which goes into the design conditions. The design conditions is based on uh, the temperature you want inside of the house, but also what is the design outdoor temperature in the wintertime and the design outdoor temperature in the summertime. What is based on every area has the maximum temperature that we normally find outdoors. For example, in Chicago, we know for sure by testing and through history that it would get at least 95 degrees outdoors uh, on a, a warm day in the summertime and it's around a minus two degrees in the wintertime. And by knowing that, we know we would design our heating and cooling system based on those outdoor temperatures and considering the indoor temperatures to find out what the temperature difference between indoors and outdoors. And then we start looking at where we lose heat, such as windows and doors. And we go through and look at some of the cons uh, key considerations. Yes? So is it saying that um, in different uh, areas, uh, different climate areas, regions, I guess, around the world or country, uh, so with the, uh, in, when you're dealing with, when you're talking about the, uh, when you're just talking about dealing with outside, Absolutely. Well, not only just the type of equipment, but how we size equipment up. So I'm going to show you this. We're going to go to the table. If you look at worksheet A, and they say that we transcribe the information from table uh, 1A. So we're going to turn to table 1A, and here is it. We can look under Illinois. We could go to Chicago. It, it breaks uh, Chicago down multiple different areas. We've got Chicago mixed field, which is basically downtown Chicago off the lakefront. Uh, we have Midway Airport and O'Hare Airport. And they, we could look at it, it could give us the elevation. So let's look at um, 
Midway Airport, the elevation is 620 feet above sea level. Uh, the latitude is at 41 degrees latitude. And it says the winter design outdoor temperature would be zero degrees, even though this winter would have been a lot colder than that, but on the average, we know that it would be around zero degrees at Midway. Then they go to the summertime, and we look at Midway Airport. They say that it would be normally around uh, that area, 91 degrees. We know it would reach uh, that in the summertime. So we will use those calculations to determine the heat load calculations, and that will determine uh, what is the, um, uh, how large the equipment will be. So we, do, we use that to determine how much heat we're going to need to heat the house or cool the house. So in the field, you using this uh, to go through this as a kind of guideline or something? Yes, this will be a factor we use. So as we go through and uh, sizing up a house, using the charts to fill out the information, this will be information to get our design conditions. So this chart is one of the things we use for design conditions. So in, the, um, in this Manual J book, the first, like I say, f uh, five sections are f will give us the information on how to, uh, the that things we need to know, knowledge we need to know. But when you get to the tables in section six, then is, this will basically walk us through step by step of what to do. For example, let's go look at um, the section 6.3, which is you filling out worksheet A and design conditions. So if you read this, it says, worksheet A provides a record of the indoor and outdoor design conditions used for the job. The following information shall be transcribed from table 1A. And here what it goes into, it, uh, using that, uh, that chart, which is uh, uh, chart one, uh, worksheet A. It says location and job name. We fill that out. So let's say it's the customer, customer Jones. And location is in, let's say, Waukegan. And it said the design, uh, the indoor design temperature for the heating and cooling. You fill that information out in the chart. And it says indoor humidity that you want inside the house. Then you go to elevation latitude, and it basically goes step by step and just filling out the information in that chart. So it says, Worksheet A also holds